Welcome back, episode, the actual episode 26, after the Bakugo episode was lost. It was so good. Heartbreaking. That Heartbreaking. is legitimately, that was a banger of an episode. It's not like, a, oh, you guys, this so sad. No, that was a really good one, and I'm, and I'm sad that it's gone. Something like, um... Uh, an older episode, uh, one of them lame old hunter hunters, or yeah. or the freaking um, Suicide Squad. If we lost that, we're like, ah, that sucks. But now I'm, I am legit. I saw that 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 legitimately ruined my day for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, really good. Um, and then we were gonna do the new Super Eye Patch Wolf video about Bleach. You guys know the one. We were gonna do that, but I am not done with Bleach yet. Um, I should be sometime this week, and I said, do you want to just postpone the recording or just do something else? This guy said, let's just do something else, so we're doing something else this week. We are doing um, the first Totally Not Mark video, Dragon Ball Perfected Fighting, the uh, Anatomy of Anime, whatever. Such a messy title. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, I don't even know what Why this is going to be. Why do you always put your hand up on the modem? <laughs> I don't know. That's a very good I'm question. Like, I, every single time, I'm like, he's gonna knock that over and just screw something up and just mm, no. Um, it's more just to feel the heat of it. I don't know. I have weird takes. Let's just get into uh, it. You, anyway, Mark, Mark. Um, I don't particularly like him. Mm. He's 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 whatever to me. Yeah, he's not a. I've seen a couple of his videos. And I'm like, yeah, that's this ain't for me. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's very much one of these. Um. Somebody was talking about iPad Wolf versus Sean, the YouTuber I bring up every now and then, where they both talked about Cuphead, and Sean brought up a lot of, like, the racism, and he did a lot of deep diving, whereas iPad Wolf is just, like, surface level, maybe a little below surface level, and I feel like that's what... Paying homage to the Disney yeah, classics. Yeah, some stuff like and... that. And I feel like... um I feel like that's a problem with a lot of YouTubers. They either go a little too, they either go too little or too much. Mm -hmm. Sean is a great middle ground, like, but a lot of people are just like, like the part five face stuff. Who, yeah. dude, is ridiculous. And um, iPatch Wolf, I feel like this Bleach video is just gonna be a lot of surface level. I feel like <laughs> iPatch likes to. I, why are we talking about iPatch? This is about Mark. you brought him up. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> But I feel like iPad likes to do a lot of like everybody thinks this way, so let me make a video showing why they should think this way. Continue down this path, and maybe confirmation bias. Maybe dig a little deeper, so you can. Oh yeah, I didn't realize or think about that. That's so now I like it more, a little bit more, or I hate it a little bit more. But Mark, like, yeah, perfectly. His whatever. Let's get into it. Just smothers it. Jam is just taunting him now. Wait, I don't believe it. Okay. First off, when it comes to fight choreography, why would you use actual fight <laughs> in the end? And scripted performances like this and wrestling. Yeah, uh, anime is scripted performances that's what you should be using they are not actually now they take a lot from real world but they're not actually doing this stuff you're not gonna find a lot of people actually being able to dodge and catch punches and stuff like that it's not gonna happen so why are you using know, real fights I, I, he's gonna go with the fight choreography or the storytelling of a fight or something like that and that's i guess that's was to lean into it <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? How he can just be taken in. Real, fake, scripted, or animated. Lightsaber duels, aerial showdowns, or gunslinging standoffs. Fighting is something that has held the interest of mankind for thousands of years. The oldest sport in the world is wrestling. The current highest paid athlete is a boxer. The cinematic dynasty that dominates the box office today is centered around fighting. But why are fight scenes so captivating? What is it about them that holds our attention so perfectly? In this video, I hope to outline what I believe are the most important aspects to create a compelling fight scene. 
And what better fight to focus this video on than the fight that started it all for me when I was 9 years old. The same fight that made my interest blossom into a passion and eventually an obsession. Today we are taking an in-depth look at what I call Akira Toriyama's fight scene masterpiece. Goku vs Vegeta. If you were to ask fans of action films what they thought the most important part of a fight scene was, most would be inclined to answer with, quite simply, the action. It is an action scene. That's a little vague. Yeah. Of course they would go, yeah, the action. But then upon a second, just a follow-up question, they would dig a little bit deeper. But yeah, surface level, they probably like, yeah, action, you know, how good the punches are. If I'm looking for a good matchup. Yeah. I, 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 there are a thousand Jackie Chan fights. There are like three I that stick in my mind because they were really good matchups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that go into a good fight. Um, going over to One Piece right now, you got Usopp and Nami versus OT and K1. Where I'm just like, yo, we, we doing this? I'm mad interested in that. <laughs> Stuff like that, and, and you go and stuff. I I really like fights where you know what these people can do, and then you just sort of I know what these people can do. I know what these people can do, and you just sort of match make it in your head. Go, ooh, did, can they do this? And what's this gonna happen? And what if this happens? Happen? I like doing that as opposed to something like fairy tale where people are just like, ah, now I have this power, and then you go, well, that I couldn't I couldn't predict that, so th it's much less interesting. It's also on top of the uh, whole action fans being a fan. Um, what are they going to stick to? They're going to say action first. But the storytelling around the action is just as important as the action itself. You could plop up a good fight scene, but I'm not going to care as much if I don't know the characters, if I don't know what's going on around mm -hmm. them, if I don't know what happened before or after this fight. I, it's still going to be a good fight, but I just don't care as much. I was talking on the podcast, and I, I said this a while ago, that I would rather watch a mediocre match between wrestling match between two people that I know and care about than a five-star classic with two people that I don't know and don't know the story about. And Mike said he'd rather have watched the five-star classic. So there are people that are just like, give me good action and choreography, and that's, I'm good. But I feel like that's super detached if you care even a little bit about the characters and not just mm -hmm. the action. Like this Goku and Vegeta thing. It's not as fulfilling if you don't know anything about Goku, Vegeta, Krillin, Gohan, Piccolo, nobody. It's not as fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure that other people would just... Hop in and just go. Yeah, it is just as fulfilling. I don't think so. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there are people out there that like. Are um, like, it's fine. It's an action scene. Um, we see what Krillin can do in that moment. So this is, I guess, this is all that he can do. And really, Dragon Ball punch, fly, kick, blast. But somebody he was got talking a disc about, and then he also got a disc for some reason. Some, you know, there's a lot of anime fans that are strictly about. It, does it have a good fight? Show me the good fights. Um, for somebody like, uh, somebody is not a fan of One Piece and they were like, Hey, somebody else was like, watch the Katakuri versus Luffy fight. No, don't. And it's, and he was like, this fight is trash. What are y'all talking about? Because <laughs> you don't have anything around it. You don't know the characters. You don't have anything around it. You don't know how Luffy got up to that moment. You it's very weird. Like, so yeah. For something like Dragon Ball, which for the most part, the Goku versus Vegeta is very different. I feel like it gets like that later on. But for the most part, it's a lot of just banding about and not really doing anything. Mm -hmm. After all, just show some spectacular stunts and feats of strength. That should suffice, correct? Well, That's no, not... actually. Mm -hmm. For one simple reason. A good fight scene needs context. The setup. Oh, he literally just said that. Yeah. <laughs> It, it absolutely does. Yeah, it's hard to... I wouldn't care about Ippo versus Sendo as much. Also, Sendo should not have won that fight. Not the Ippo fight, but the current one. He shouldn't um, have won that. I'm of two minds about it. No. <laughs> I'm of one mind. <laughs> and you know I love me yeah. some Sendo. Yeah, I, I can see both he wins and he loses. I'm, he's just like, I am the toughest dude. Outside of Ippo, have we seen him lose? Mm -mm. Yeah, so and Ippo is quote a monster with a truck on the end of his arm. So <laughs> <laughs> retiring people left and right, just like those are the types of hits I gotta take. 
This is not for me. Is important. And something that I think quite elegantly demonstrates this fact is the sport of boxing. Typically speaking, in a boxing pay-per-view, the entire show is sold on its main event exclusively. The Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor fight was what everyone tuned in to see in 2017. See, that's a very, that's very, um, it's not disingenuous, but it, that fight was so much more a spectacle and bigger mm -hmm. than the sport as opposed to X boxer versus Y boxer that the typical yeah. fan is going to see on a Saturday night. So that, I don't think that's very fair because again, that's just just so much more a spectacle. Especially since McGregor is an MMA fighter, so it was melding two sports to see who was the better, and it's just nonsensical to just go, "Oh yeah, it was all built around this." So of course, it's not fair because even without the build up, it's something huge. It's an undefeated fighter versus one of the best MMA fighters at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can't say everybody was tuned in. There's got to be some people that's like, I like the undercard people. I don't know who Money Mayweather is, or I don't care about him. Um, mm -hmm. McGregor is more the, he's the MMA fighter, so yeah. if you're the undercard dude, you know the boxing dude. So, yeah, and there were times where I would go to um, shows, um, uh, music shows, concerts and everything, and people would just straight up leave after, like, the opening acts, because they like those people, and then they just bounce. Mm -hmm. They're not yeah. there for, like, the, the main card. They're there, there for... Like the opening acts. I remember I went to see either it was either da uh, Tap Roop or Dance Gavin Dance, and there were two bands before Close to Home and I Wrestled a Bear once. And after I Wrestled a Bear once, quite a few people left, but qu way more people also filed in around that time because mm -hmm. they were basically only there for the headliner, but there were on some people that only cared about some of the opening acts. They had a local yeah. band, they had Close to Home, they had I Wrestled a Bear once, and then they had the main event, and people cared about I Wrestled a Bear once, and they didn't like Dance Gavin Dance or Taproot, and they just bounced. So, but there are gonna be people, gonna be people yeah, like, people I'm just gonna just stick like, around. Yeah, I just wanna see Stone Cold versus The Rock. Mm -hmm. I'm certain many of you watching this video right now saw the fight. Nope. But I how did. many of you were excited for, or even watched, any of the other seven fights that night, I, did. I would imagine the number is drastically lower than the number of pay-per-view buys the show. But again, that's not fair because it was such a spectacle. Yeah. It's not like you bought a pay-per-view and then went, okay, uh, you're buying a typical boxing pay-per-view and it's like, it's only for the main event, so I'm not going to watch anything else. Or it's only for the main event of the MMA card, I'm not going to watch the anything else. Yeah, you're that's gonna, ridiculous. You're put it on and then just like, do it on your phone a little bit or something. I don't, I don't see too many... Again, we, we don't have the data, and I'm sure he doesn't have the data, but that seems a little bit... This is know. way too speculative. Uh, speculative. Yeah. ...ended up receiving, and that is because with those fights, there were no established stakes. No, there were no stakes that we as a general populace knew, mm -hmm. but boxing fans knew those stakes, and I'm sure they cared about it, but us who do not care about boxing did not really care about it. Mm -hmm. So they only went for the event, not the main event, the event. The things that has the promos going, hey, watch this. Here's this dude coming over from there. Yeah. And yeah, of course, as opposed to just some Mexican dude just going, ah, I'm fighting. But yeah, there's there's somebody that's a fan of that Mexican dude. Mm-hmm. Characters were not defined and the viewers didn't know anything about them. No, casual viewers did not know anything about them. Boxing fans knew what they were getting. They knew who they were. They knew their style, so on and so forth. I have no doubt the individuals involved in those fights were exceptional athletes, but that usually isn't enough to capture attention. What they needed, and this is the same thing any good writer of a fight scene is looking for, is to give the viewers or readers a why. When writing... One dude was a champion, and he fought another dude for the belt. Yeah, I want that belt. You're better than me in the rankings, and I want to climb up the rankings, so I'm going through you. That's the why. That's the why. That's the why of any sport where there's yeah. rankings and climbing up. That's completely the why. Yeah, I don't... I, you're not... For every fight, you're not going to get like, hey, here's my dog, Fido, and I fi I'm fighting for his medication or anything. You're not going to get that, but... Even going off the Money Mayweather and um, Connor, was it just, hey, these two are coming from different worlds and they're fighting? Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's... Connor was like, I want to fight that dude. And Mayweather was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting. 
it the, all the stuff around it. There was a uh, the in Khabib Conor McGregor was so much more engaging because there was like this gangster undertone. It was people throwing chairs through buses, <laughs> and it's like what the f- everything surrounding that was <laughs> incredible. Gonna They're gonna kill each other. <laughs> that was incredible. This was just like yeah, I want to fight that dude. Bet. <laughs> Kira Toriyama made absolutely certain before Goku and Vegeta even laid eyes on each other. The following questions had been answered for his readers. What is at stake? Well, thanks to Raditz, we learned that the impending Saiyans Vegeta and Nappa are a group that wipe out entire civilizations and sell planets. As well as that, when they do arrive, a number of the Earth's defenders were killed. Therefore, if the fight doesn't end in Goku's favor, then he loses everything and everyone. What has there isn't that basically every anime villain yeah. in history? I'm sitting there like, what? Perfected fighting? This is... You You showed Star Wars. That was back in the 70s. We know the stakes there. So, what, I'm sure Astro Boy has stakes and every, everything Big that's came before. And all that and... stuff. <laughs> this seems like one of those, I'm just going to hype up Toriyama even though everything else does this as well. Everything and everyone. What has their journey been like? To get to where he is today, Goku- What was Conor McGregor and uh, Mayweather's journey? Mayweather was undefeated, and Conor McGregor was an MMA dude. That was really good. Beginning and end? Mayweather's cocky. I know that. So is McGregor. Again, casual dude. I just heard about it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with it, but yeah, this is. See, this is something else. You don't need the peripheral stuff a lot of time because we went to a house show and and this dude started really liking Seth Rollins based purely on the match he saw. Yeah, that's that's when I was just like, oh, that dude is amazing, and the match was pretty good. So you don't need that peripheral stuff. It, it enhances it absolutely. Himself in defense of the earth. He has traveled across the heavens and sought the teachings of a new, more powerful master to meet the impending challenges. And finally, what are their motivations? Whoa, 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 whoa. Goku is where, where did Vegeta come from? Are we skipping through that? Yep. He's just some Saiyan dude that just popped on the planet. Big we strong. Don't, we don't know anything about him, sir. Sir, you just you just skipped over that. We know Goku, yeah, but what of his adversary? <laughs> you do. You can't do that. I think I just did. So. <laughs> Wait a second. We know where they came from. At that point, we know that Vegeta's just some evil dude. <laughs> A desire to challenge himself against someone like Vegeta. To revive his fallen comrades is also at the forefront of his mind. To achieve this, he needs to defeat Vegeta. Vegeta, on the other hand, is motivated by a desire to gather the Dragon Balls, to make his wish for immortality and to rule the universe. To achieve this... We didn't learn that till later, correct? I don't think he ever expressed why he wanted the yeah, Dragon Balls on Earth. I don't think so either. May have been a line or two. It was just like immaterially. <laughs> he needs to defeat Goku. Your insolence just cost you this world. I'll blow it all to pieces, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. It's no secret that trash talking sells. Steve Austin made a career out of it. The Rock did too, and even Floyd and Connor have utilized this in their respective careers. Trash talking is used to antagonize your opponent, but it also adds some much needed personality and charisma to the equation. No, Ippo is not a trash yeah. talker, and he has uber charisma. Yeah, and he's not. uber awesome. Neither was Vork. And they're just so just two polite dudes. It doesn't need to be trash talking. Ippo's got you like, whoa, this dude is super duper strong. What am I going to do? And then the other dudes are like, holy crap, that dude's fist. <laughs> yeah, trash talking doesn't inherently mean that it's better. It's... And not having track talking doesn't mean it's inherently worse. Yeah. Or it doesn't have personality. Again, that's ridiculous. Yeah. 
a fight becomes very boring without an understanding of the personalities involved. Yeah, but and that doesn't mean trash talking. Yeah, that no. could just be expressing your personality. Mm -hmm. um, in um, Fire Force, the main character... I, I forgot his name at this point. Uh oh No, it doesn't matter because that series is so meh. But the main character and his brother are fighting and you see the personality where it's like, I'm going to save you, brother. We're playing a game of tag. We're not really fighting, blah, blah, blah. You can see the personality there without going, you're a piece of sh brother and I'm going to end you. And blah, blah, blah. You see personality. That doesn't necessarily mean I need to sh talk you just to have the personality. Sh talking is part of your personality. It's not part of mine. So I don't need to do that. And I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Heels and baby faces in, in wrestling. They don't. They don't need to. Baby faces will just gesture to the crowd, and that's their personality. Heels will trash talk like KO. He'll he'll just yell at you in the middle of a match. But yeah, it doesn't have to be in there trash talking. It's just there's other ways to show personality. Orange Cassidy, Cassidy, dude, he has so much personality, <laughs> and he's doing essentially nothing. <laughs> Ali, where he just backs up into the corner and just dodges with his hands to his side. It's like, you can't even hit me, you piece of shit. An effective way of establishing personality. Or there was a... <laughs> a MMA fighter knocked out another dude and started break breakdancing. <laughs> He's the other dude's bleeding on the ground, oh literally like six feet away, oh, and he, he starts have to get a fine for that. <laughs> oh no, that is poor sportsmanship. I don't know, but that he is... just started dancing. Uh uh, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's that dude's personality. The other, I'm sure another dude is just gonna be like, "That was a good fight, handshakes." It didn't detract from the fight because they shook hands before and after, and everything was cool. And an effective way of establishing personality is through dialogue. The WWE and other wrestling organizations see the value of establishing characters for this oh, very reason. Cassidy. You will not see a single wrestling show without something that is called a promo. A promo is a monologue. As far as uh, New Japan has done that several times. And uh, pay-per-views also a lot of times do not have promos. They'll have backstage segments, but that's not technically a promo. And a lot of times they don't even have back backstage segments. For a performer to communicate directly to the audience or to call someone out. This is a fantastic way of communicating character nice and to help the audience find out what it is you stand for. Every character needs this. Uh, I think you're ugly. I'm gonna kick your ass so bad you'll walk home with a limp or uh, What's your dad doing? Yeah, yeah. I wish they would stop talking and fight. Attitude. Yeah. <laughs> Before, and I will fight you on this, the most iconic standoff in animation history, Vegeta gives Goku an ultimatum. Oh, um, a. The most iconic standoff in anime history? Animation history. Okay, so that just enters the spectrum of Disney and everything. Let me make sure he said animation and not just anime. I will fight you on this. The most iconic standoff in animation history. Oh, he stressed animation. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Again, Vegeta just bad guy. What does he want? He wants the Dragon Balls so that he can overthrow Frieza so he can become rule. the worst bad guy. Yes. He wants to basically slot into Frieza's position. And Frieza's just an evil dude. So that's his motivation. How does he accomplish this? By getting the Dragon Balls. What does he know about the Dragon Balls? Basically nothing. So he kills the Dragon Ball man. <laughs> Without even just going, wait, what's going on? Oh, you know about the Dragon Balls. Let's keep you alive or anything. Let's just break all your arms and legs and incapacitate you over here. Question you later after we kill everybody. No, this was mo not, most certainly not the most iconic. <laughs> No! You Okay. He can't just claim this without explaining why it is. No, he just said I would fight you on it. So that means he's not going to do it. You have to present an yes, argument for him so he has to rebound upon it. Correct. So he's not going to explain this or expand on it. He's just going to move the... Yeah. No, this is a fact until you contradict it. Yes. Vegeta gives Goku an ultimatum. A be his right-hand man, and together they can overthrow the cosmos. Or B, to defy him. You will buy before me! <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic 
Yo, please. We can make this world a better place. You don't know what you want. You will bow down before me. I swear it. You and you have. <laughs> Yo, this ain't working. <laughs> I gotta keep some semblance of my dignity. <laughs> Oh, oh man, that was <laughs> oh, that's the greatest. But yeah, be his right hand man, and what happens once you're useless? Well, you get blasted away just like Nappa, mm -hmm. or defy him. So it's does. either die by his hand later or die by his hand now. It could overthrow the cosmos, or B to defy him. If this had been the first time we saw anything to do with Dragon Ball. This scene alone would effectively communicate Vegeta and Goku's personality. Yeah, anime does this all the time. Um, they constantly say their motivation mm -hmm. in the fight. So yeah, there's there's nothing special about that at all. It's it's just a thing that it, it's like you said, it's like a promo. We need to reestablish why we're doing this. That's why uh, so many times wrestlers will say this Sunday or next Sunday at this pay per view. So it punches in your mind when you can see this confrontation between the two. And then there's other things like Epo where it's just like I need to beat this guy. This is this is a sanctioned match and you're my opponent. No no deeper no deeper layers or anything, but then other times it's it's an honor thing like against the magician who is the greatest, by the way. He needs to come back. Yeah, okay audience perfectly. Vegeta, the Saiyan prince with a fighting potential in a super elite class, fighting for selfish reasons. Goku, the lower class outcast, fighting for the fate of his home. However, what oh. shows personality more? What does it mean to be an elite Saiyan? That you're just stronger? I'd assume so. I would... Again, we don't know anything about the Saiyan culture at this point, so he just goes, I'm an elite warrior. He could be lying. We don't know anything about Vegeta at this point. He could be at the lower rung of elite. Yeah. It's... And again, what does elite mean? Just stronger. So when you become stronger, do you become elite? Are you born into it? Like class wise? Yeah. Or... Do if, if Vegeta had, Vegeta does have a little brother. Is his little brother elite? If he's so much weaker than him that he's sent off to a little piss baby planet? Is he not elite? Or is he elite because he's brought born into... The Saiyan culture. I mean, the Saiyan, the, the Vegeta family. Uh, <laughs> 30 years later, these are questions. Why? Why? But they answered it. Somewhere. I don't think they did. No, they had to, because he said the questions were all answered. Oh. We yeah, asked I why, guess, and they were answered. I guess he did, and I guess I'm just wrong. Well, yeah, you, there, somewhere in there, there's an answer. <laughs> Of his home. However, what shows personality more than what you say is how you react and what you do. And Akira Toriyama knew this when he wrote Dragon Ball. The Kamehameha versus Gallic Gun beam struggle is one of, if not my absolute favorite set piece in all of the series. It's vitally Pause. important that your character. What's the difference between a Gallic Gun and a, and a Kamehameha? This was the first time that he displayed this blast. What can it do? Does it explode on impact or is it the exact same thing as a Kamehameha? Is it stronger? Is it weaker? Uh, what are the stakes in this? He says he's going to blow up the planet. Can the Kamehameha blow up the planet because it's, it's matching this? These are stake questions that we need answered. But again, this is the first time that he's done this. It's just a beam. And Goku fires just a beam. That's equal in power until he just goes more power. And why did it not kill Vegeta? I was, I, I'm just now thinking about this. Because we've seen that a Kamehameha, I thought it was just like the force of it. But we've seen a Kamehameha blow off Cell's limbs. Yeah. So why? Yeah, sometimes it's piercing. Sometimes it's concussive. It's It's whatever it needs to be. It's, it's and he just gets blasted by his own beam and Goku's beam, stronger beam that was intended to destroy the planet, and he's fine. 
He rolls off of it. Literally rolls off of it. He flies up into the planet while he's 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 in contact with the blast. And it's not piercing him. It's not damaging his armor, really. It's just like pushing him up into the sky. What? <laughs> but Krillin's little baby blast can pierce his stomach? And Namek? What? Now, you could say his defenses are down, but I'm sure Vegeta was super tired and pouring most of his energy into that blast. So, hey, wait a second. Saiyans can't survive in space. He blows up the planet. What's his next move? Maybe it's like a chain reactive, like uh, Frieza did with Nami. Nami uh, Frieza was supposed to destroy Nami, but he didn't. So he could run to his ship and blah, blah, blah. And Goku's going to let him? No, he's going to be dead because he's hit at the exact same time. No, he didn't know that Goku was I going to. I was going to struggle with it. That's a good point. Iconic. These are the questions we need to be asking. Why didn't Luchi dodge uh, um, Luffy's final Gatling gun? Because he had his back turned and he turned around and he was already getting capped on. Luchi was canonically stronger, faster, better and than Luffy. And then he hit, uh, he hit his strongest armor. He was like, okay, well, he's weakened. I'm just going to hit my strongest version of my armored move. And it just hit through it. So... And this is after he just went, I'm just going to destroy all your internal organs. Okay, you're not a threat anymore. Let me go kill your crew. He was just like, whatever, whatever. That's why he got hit. Explanation right there. But these questions that we have with Dragon Ball, it's like, wait a second. Once you start thinking about this crap, because I, I never thought about this like this. Yeah, same. <laughs> like when you just brought up the why didn't it destroy him? I'm like, why didn't it destroy him? Man, iconic. You know, it's just iconic because it was a moment that happened when you were a kid. And it's like, wow, big, cool, strong, big, strong man going to destroy the planet. But then big, strong man stopped him from destroying the planet. Yeah. It's baby. It's vitally logic. important that your characters physically communicate their personalities and traits to the audience. And no other set piece more emphatically communicates this than the beam struggle. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Because we talked a lot and we there was a lot said. Hold on. Gun beam struggle is one of, if not my absolute favorite set piece in all of the series. It's vitally important that your characters physically communicate their personalities and traits to the audience. And no other set piece more emphatically communicates this than the beam struggle. Because of who Goku... I, I guess for Dragon Ball. Because he did say it was within the series. I guess, but again, we got these questions. But then... Couldn't you say the same for Cell and Gohan? Yeah, even more so. And because we know what a Kamehameha is, and Cell does the Kamehameha, and we know what a Kamehameha is, and Gohan does the Kamehameha. So we go equal strength Kamehameha. Why did that destroy Cell? Why but not Vegeta? It overtook him with his own. Th this is trash. <laughs> <laughs> have we have we ever seen what happens when? The special beam cannon interacts with another blast. Because mm -mm. I was about to say we did, but that was actually a Yu Yu Hockey show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no. yeah, would it cut through it or would it or would it Cause struggle? The spirit gun cut through a blast. <laughs> yeah, I remember that as well. <laughs> but yeah, because I don't, I don't that's that's a Pearson one. Yeah, would it like engulf? Piccolo while piercing the next person. Because all beams cannot be... Like, with the Destructo disc, would it pierce through a Kamehameha? Would it? Or would it, like, clash and dissipate? Because, would it be honestly, like Kimon and, and Kaido where it just splits? Mm -hmm. and... Honestly, we've only seen, what, three beam struggles in Dragon Ball? In all of Dragon Ball? Something like that. So we don't know really the properties of what such and such is going to do. It, luckily, Vegeta just had a similar blast. <laughs> I guess that's just what it is. Yeah, what happens when the Big Bang interacts with something? Yeah, it's a big a, old ball of that's energy. That's a ball that explodes. <laughs> this, 
Dragon Ball. Man, Toriyama was just like, hey, whatever. He got the Big Bang attack. Look at it. <laughs> is he has gained the abilities necessary to close the gap that existed between himself and Vegeta. Vegeta, because of who he is, decides that since he can't compete with Goku hand to hand, he decides to take the easier option, which is to threaten the planet so as to bait Goku into taking the full brunt of his attack, preying on his value system. From this what? <laughs> Is that is that was that the yeah, plan? I don't, I don't think it was. Did know. Vegeta ever express that, or was he just a big mad monkey man? Like everybody's dying now. Yeah, I can. I have the ability to destroy the planet, and thus I will. I'm not gonna bait you into what? <laughs> See, this is one of them reading too far into it. Because this, this, go ahead. This is it's, it's it's his favorite, so he needs to justify it with something else other than ooh big beam struggle. Now, the reason that Goku or Vegeta could not quote unquote hang with Goku is because Goku did this uh, special technique that tripled and quadrupled his power. So what in Vegeta's mind makes him go, well, he can't do the same for an energy blast? Because <laughs> that's essentially what you would have to say. Yeah. It's not like Goku used the techniques he learned on Earth to be like, oh, you're punching? Well, I'm going to move my arm and trip you. And like Deku did with uh, Bakugo when he when they fought the first time and he did that big swing and tripped him up. It's not like, wow, I can't compete in hand-to-hand, -hand, but I'm stronger and I know I'm stronger, so let's just go into this beam blast. No, he has this technique that makes him on par or stronger than me, so I'm going to blast and for some <laughs> reason it's just not going to happen here. <laughs> For some reason, I'm stronger than you now. That's essentially what you're telling me. Even though you just were showing laying hands to me, and that's why I'm so angry that I'm just like, you know what, it, this fight thing isn't working because you're on par with me. Planet go boom. In this very instance, we learn a host of new things about Vegeta. In this moment, he's desperate, he's resourceful, Resourceful? resourceful? Where did he pull a resource from? He yeah. pulled a resource when he turned into the monkey. Yeah, that's that's like, hey, I got this technique and that makes me really, really strong. But this is just, I got a blast and blast make the planet explode. How is that resourceful? He's resourceful and he's ruthless. As yeah, he killed his friend. Yeah, that, that already showed his ruthlessness. And he, and he was sitting there just going, all right, we can wait for Goku, but if he's not here in 10 minutes, we're killing you all. We've, we've seen this. We've seen him hop, hop out of the plot, the pot and just go, wow, look at all these people. Nap and kill him. We've seen Ruthless. Action rises and the threat has been issued. Vegeta jets into the air. Goku reacts. As an imposing presence looming above, Vegeta begins to charge his attack. Without second-guessing himself, Goku plants his feet and throws caution to the wind, igniting the Kaioken oh. technique. What's he gonna do? Give up? Yeah. <laughs> just, and just grovel for his life? He should've just went, give me a 10. <laughs> let's do a 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not even play around with this. <laughs> let's not go with three or four. No, let's just go on straight to the top. And then uh, I'm just done. Yeah, Let's just no, do that. Yeah, whatever. Um, either I'll be dead or my body will just be completely incapacitated, in which case I can just wish my body back to normal because there are no stakes. But yeah. Putting his body... No, this is this is a hero thing. This is, this is nothing. Again, going back to Star Wars, Luke knew that he would... That, that fight was just like, uh, join me by my side, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Darth Vader, strike him down. And he knew that Darth Vader was one of the most powerful Jedi of all time and his father, but yet he still yeah. fought him. We, this is just a hero thing. This is just a main character thing. In fact, Luke was like, you know what? I can't beat this guy. He's shown it because he's cut off my hand already. Uh, I'm not going to turn evil. I don't want to turn evil and join him because if I try to, he's going to capture me and might mind control me. Let me just kill myself. And he jumps down and his plan was just to die. It was yeah, just there to was kill no, himself. There was, like, there was yeah. no be, no, you can't have me. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is my preferred option. It just so happened that he got rescued. But like, yeah, his whole yeah. plan was, I'm okay. I'm just going to kill myself. So you can't have me. Heroes do this type of stuff all the time wind, igniting the Kaioken technique, putting his body at extreme risk and in harm's way <laughs> once again. During this scene, there's a beautiful amount of visual storytelling taking place also. Goku is quite literally and figuratively the only thing standing between the Earth 
and its destruction. Positioning Vegeta above Goku like this also communicates to the viewer or reader that Vegeta is again superior to Goku. This method... Oh, no, he is. Yeah. But what is he going to do? Blast the ground from the ground? <laughs> He's trying to destroy the Earth. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's... Why is Goku black? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out in 20 years. It was also implemented during their standoff. Vegeta standing above Goku, mirroring his vision of himself atop the hierarchy. The following oh, point I want to make that. here... Yeah. It blasts good because iconic positioning and planting his feet and literally and figuratively against the, the in the way of the blast on coming odds and etc. etc. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>